please subscribe. Okay, folks. How are we doing today? As you can see, my big fat butt in that window there. We're going to do a review today. We got the Charbroil Vertical Smoker. I forget exactly what the numbers are on it. But you can pretty much see what we got going on here. I'm back up there enough where you can see it. I researched the tar out of this before I bought it. A buddy of mine bought a uh, Pit Boss, great big SOB, for like 400 bucks. So I bought this one. And it was like, I think it was 269 at uh, Menards. But here's my catch. Okay, as you can see, the door is kind of hanging a little low on one side. And I've looked. There is no adjustments. There's no way to adjust it. And I called Charbroil about it, or texted them. Uh, sent them an email. They sent me an email back. We'll get into that in a little bit here, a little bit more. All right. When you get this thing, you have to actually season it. You're not really seasoning it. You're just burning off the, like, oils and stuff that they pack it with. Uh, it comes in the box just like this. Your racks. You got four racks, and they're in a box by themselves. Uh, all this is packaged into one container, but these are in a thing by themselves. So is the... Uh, Smoke box. Let's open this up. I got it on preheat. But the smoke box, the water tray, everything comes packaged. So all you have to do is open it up, put it in. As far as the smoker itself, it's all together. It's ready to plug in when you get it. So it's not like the pit boss or some of the others that you have to, you know, spend 30 minutes putting together. Okay. Uh, other smokers, you put them on smoke. It takes them a few minutes, but they get going pretty quick. This one here is not like that. This one here, you have to, you got your stuff up here at the top. Of course, you're on and off button. You're up and down for your uh, settings. It'll read out here. You've got a light. You can see that. There's a light. You got it for the probe, the timer, and the temperature. You cannot use these two at the same time. You can only use one at a time, which really sucks. Uh, but I found a way around it. So we'll go with the end of that in a minute. But you have to put it on preheat, and that takes about 40 minutes. It takes a long time for this thing to get going. I've had it on for about 10 minutes. And let's see, we're showing 120 degrees in there. Uh, I need to turn it up here in a minute. It's got vent holes on the side. Uh, let's see if you can get that in there without the sun. You've got your smoke release up top. Like I said, this, this comes together. You don't have to put anything together. All you have to do is put your racks in and your trays. Uh, we'll give this a little bit to heat up oh, in your... Thermal, uh, your probe, I've got mine hanging here. To ch I'm going to check my temperatures and stuff, but it actually goes right here. It just slides in there, and it plugs in up here, uh, up and out of the way. All you have to do is close the door on it. And I, I like the latch. Uh, it's actually, I like it better than the Pit Boss. Because I can take it and just one-handed. The pit boss is a pain in the ass to try to uh, re relatch once you unlatch it. And I can do this all day one hand. Uh, I will give you a recommendation: do not put this thing perfectly level. If you do, the door you open it, it'll keep falling back on you. I've got mine just at a slight little tilt so that my door stays open. Because this door. It's rather warm, and it will burn the crap out of you. Uh, pops and sides, everything's pretty cool. A little warm up on top. 
I think that's because of the sun. Because I've, I've set stuff up there and not had a problem. This door glass will be red hot. So watch it. So as soon as we get the thing heated up, I'm going to run it all the way up to high temp. And once I get it up there to high temp, I'm going to let it run for about an hour. I want to, I've sent everything through the dishwasher and I want to make sure there's no detergents or anything like that left on it, burn everything off. It'll go to 275 as high as it'll go. It goes to 100 on the low temp. But if you don't run it through the preheat, you will not get any smoke. What I did, I was doing some beef jerky, which is cooked at 170 degrees. I literally took the smoke box out of the smoker because it would not stay lit. And I took it out and I put it in my gas smoker, which is down there. I love that thing. That's an old Brickman gas smoker. You got to stay on that temperature. I mean, you got to watch that thing. You cannot walk off and leave that. But I love that thing. This one here, I'm having an issue with the temperature. And when I got it, there was a couple of screws inside the cabinet at the top that holds the top on that just fell out. They're stripped out. They will not stay in there. So I've had to put some Loctite on them and put them back in, get them to stay up there, basically glue them in place. Uh, questioned um, Tarboil about it. They told me that my temperature, that they sent me a thing that was right out of the handbook. I mean, word for word, right out of the handbook, like I was too stupid to read the handbook that I had to read in an email. And then they sent me a, a thing stating that uh, if I didn't respond back within 24 hours or 48 hours, that they would close the case. I sent them pictures. I said, why would you close the case? I said, the door is not right, and the temperature is still, you know, and when I set it on 225, it should not be 268 in there. I told them about it, sent them pictures, everything. They closed the account, sent me a, a survey, which you can guarantee that they didn't like what I had to say in that survey. And then I also, when they closed the account, I re replied to that and sent them a picture of the door and the temperatures on the probes and pretty much gave them hell. And, you know... A week and a half later, I have not heard a peep out of these people. So their customer service sucks. Their unit is not really that bad. I, I really like it. It does a good job. We smoked salmon last night, and it turned out amazing. Uh, we did it a little different. If you go back to last Sunday, you can see that episode. Uh Oh my goodness, drop my phone. So I should have my tripod out here, huh? And you'd be looking at my ugly mug instead of the smoker the whole time. Uh, until we get it heated up and show you what's going on with it, there's not a whole lot more I can say that I'm kind of on the fence with it. A buddy of mine had a charbor or uh, had a pit boss, and his uh, control panel went out. And they kind of hum-hauled around. I guess they said it was because of COVID. But they did finally send him a uh, the thermostat, or not the thermostat, but the, yeah, I guess it would be the thermostat. They, the thermostat and a new board. And we installed it, and it's working perfect. They sent it to him for free. <clears throat> now, my camp chef, I love that thing the flat top grill griddle and then underneath is a grill i called them and told them i said look when i got your uh cover in it had a tear in it as you can see right there i said i sewed it up but you know i paid 60 bucks for this thing i'd like it right the man sent me an email within a couple of hours and said uh we got you taken care of. Within two days, 
I had a receipt showing that it was mailed, it was on its way. So their customer service is great. Charbroil, not so much. So if you get one of these charbroilers, just remember, you're pretty much going to have to take care of it on your own. If you don't know what you're doing mechanically, don't buy this because they're no help whatsoever. So sounds like we're getting heated up over there. I didn't set my uh, probe for over 250, so it's going off. I had it set at 171, so it's already beeping. So we'll go over and shut that off and wait until it gets fully heated, and then I'll show you how to set it up. That thing's still heating up, but it also comes with a remote. And this is my little workaround. Once this thing goes through its setup, uh, we'll set the time on it for like two hours so we can cook it off. But it's set at 225 is what I had it set on the other night. And then it shows 228 inside. Uh, that's not right at the moment. Uh, we just turned it on. We have not programmed it. It's still in preheat. So until it gets it through that preheat cycle, this is pretty much worthless. Uh, as soon as it gets through the preheat cycle, we'll show you a little more about this. And I'll try to get you a little better picture. There's what it shows right now. Uh, down here at the bottom is your probe temperature. If you set the probe to heat your meat at a certain temperature, it goes here. But you, if you make the mistake of when you go to wrap your food, say you got a brisket in there, you got this thing set for 203. When you pull this probe out to go in the house to wrap it, it will shut the smoker down because it'll go over the 203 mark very easily. Because if you got it set for 225, it's automatically going to go over. Once it goes over, it shuts the smoker down to 120 degrees. So then you have to go back and you have to reset it once you put it back in, set it back up for 225, and set it back up to go again. All right. Like I said, as soon as it gets through this heat preheat cycle, we'll set it up. I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, we're going to try to let you see this here. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on so we can set it up. All right. I know this is going to be hard to see, but what you do is you'll hit temperature. And I'm going to run it all the way up to 275. All right, that's as high as it will go. You hit it one more time, and it'll go to preheat. Uh, you hit it one more time, you'll see that it says pH. But we want it 275, and then you're going to hit temp again. Okay, that has the temperature set. And then, like I said, if you got meat, you want to use that, that's fine. But I use the timer. I'm going to set it for two hours, hit time again, and then for the minutes, and then you hit time again. All right, now it's set up to run at 275 for two hours. All right, I'm showing in the preheat cycle, I'm showing I'm at 225, right on the, pretty much on the nose. This one here says 252, so I really can't trust this one. I like that unit because it's got the double probe, but like I said, you can see there. See if I can get you in there where you can see it. Man, they make it a difficult. Let's do it this way. Okay. So you can see it now. It says 252. So, and but that's hanging. It may be getting the reading off of the uh, rack. So. Like I said, I go by this one. It says I'm at 225 on the nose. On the remote, it should show that I'm set for 225. Here's my little trick I use. Two, or 275 for two hours. i got an hour and 59 minutes left. But see, here's, here's the probe. It shows you that it's 240. So, again... We're off again, but this one's closer than the other one. But now I can put this in a piece of meat, and when I pull it out of the meat, not have to worry about that it's going to kick the smoker down to 120 keep warm cycle. <clears throat> so I, I can watch it here, know what my time and my temperature is, and then what the actual probe is reading for the meat. 
But now the inside temperature of the smoker itself is where I've got the issue. Like I said, this one shows that it is 240 degrees on that probe hanging on that rack. That one over there says 253. The one inside says 225. I'm going to trust the metal one inside more than I'm going to trust these other two right now. But we're going to see. This thing's supposed to top out at 275. I want to burn it off because, like I said, I put everything through the dishwasher and it may have a little residue from uh, the dish detergent or something like that I want to wash off because I'm going to cook a uh, pulled pork tomorrow. So I don't want any funky taste in there. So we'll let her get up to temp and we'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, and one thing I do want to stress, when you go to fire this smoker up on preheat cycle, go ahead and put your water, go ahead and put your wood chips in, because uh, the wood chips have to heat up. I'm, I found that pellets actually work better than the wood chips. It says wood chips or pellets, but I found out that, the, to me, either a mix of the two, because I, sometimes I'll use... Uh, I've got apple pellets, and then I'll throw some hickory uh, wood chips in there, and it seems to do all right. If you put just plain wood chips in there, they just char them. They don't burn them like they should. You end up, I can take them out of there and put them in my gas grill out there and smoke for an, another two hours. So, like I said, I use the pellets. But they seem to work a lot better. And I've also learned that they say leave the lid on the smoke box. But I found out that if you crack it about a half an inch, that you get better smoke. Uh, you just got to watch because you don't want to go crazy with the smoke. You get bitter taste and kind of makes your meat funky. So, like I said, no more than a half an inch. And that's at the most. Uh, I usually run between a quarter and a half inch and I get good smoke. Uh, you've seen on some of my videos, there's just a light blue smoke coming out of it. That's what I want. I don't want it to be smoking everything so hard that, you know, you get that, you get, you'll get a funky taste with it and just a bitter taste. I don't like it, especially with hickory. I like hickory, but like I said, it will turn bitter on you real quick. Um, like I said, be sure you put your wood chips in ahead of time when you first start it up because they have to heat up or your pellets or whatever you're heating and it will start smoking during the uh cycle uh through the preheat cycle and then once you set it for temperature it should continue to smoke but this is why i'm running a uh burn off right now uh let's see if we can get you dialed in here i don't know if you'll be able to see it because it's so light but there's actually smoke coming out of the vent at the top and the reason being is because there's still stuff on the outer edges of the smoker you, you know there's stuff on your racks and stuff where i ran them through the dishwasher and it is it's actually smoking right now and there is no wood chips there's no pellets no nothing plus there may be some uh residual you know like sawdust that didn't wash out all the way in the box but it is smoking a little bit so once we get her up there at 275 or get it at its max temperature for a little bit. I want to check and see what these temperature readings are again. But like I said, you've seen me cook on this thing before on previous videos. And I'm going to continue to use it. I'm going to probably take the door off and see if I can straighten it out somehow. Because uh, it is kind of cocked pretty bad. Uh, I don't know if it got damaged in shipping or if it was built on a Friday. I don't, it just doesn't look right. And if anybody that you know me well enough to know that things have to be right, they have to be clean, they have to be right. I'm just particular that way. Uh, but we're going to get her all cleaned up and get her ready for tomorrow. And we'll check these temperatures. Here's another thing that I've, this thing here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. But it has went to 275, and it says it's 32 degrees in there. So, I don't know what that's all about. They don't tell you that in the book. 
of what that could possibly be. But here in a second, it'll jump back up to normal temperature. But why it says it's 32 degrees in there, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, low batteries or hell, I don't know. But that's one of the flaws that I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. So, <clears throat> all right, we'll let her heat up and then we'll be back. There's why I do my burn off. I'm sure you could probably see that now. Smoking. That's about as much smoke as I use with my meat. Maybe a little more. But there is no chips, no nothing in there. And it's smoking like crazy. Temperatures are... The probe that's in it says it's 276. I got it set on 275. But these things over here... This one here... Which... Like I said, obviously I can't trust. It says it's 291. I had to turn it up because it was beeping. And this one here, let's see if we can find it. Whoop, we got it zoomed in. Let's back it out a little bit so you guys can see that. That one's about 265, maybe 270. So it's getting up there. But I, this one here, I think is probably the closest. But... Their probe, yeah, their probe's now jumped up to 280. So I think the one that's in the box is the one I can trust, which this one ain't too far off. But that one over there, and that's, I think that's a, a charbroil thing or timer or some kind of king, tar king or something. That's a Broil King uh, probe. And like I said, I, that's at 293 right now. So I don't know where it's getting its numbers from. But I'm going to watch this one. Because this is what I wrote Charbroil about. I got it set for 275. And I'm now at 282. All right. I can justify 10 degrees. But I had it set on 225, and it was 268 in there, so it kind of bothers me. I can't do that kind of a uh, big jump when I'm trying to cook a brisket that's going to take, you know, 14, 16 hours. So we'll give it another half hour and see what the temperatures say then, because it should be at its highest temp is what it's going to get. So we'll see what they show here in about a half hour. All right, here's the issue I'm talking about with this unit. This is their probe. Got it set on 275. It's 303, according to their probe. Now, let's go over here. we got to keep talking over this radio because we have to shut it off real quick. We don't want to get YouTube all upset. This one says it's 315 in there. I keep having to turn this thing up because it keeps going higher and higher. And this one shows we're right at 300, about 298. So for a 275 degree smoker, I sure am awful hot in there. And on top of that, if I was cooking a big piece of meat and I'm 28 degrees off, I don't like that. And I don't like that either. Look, the thing just went to 32 degrees again. I don't know what that's all about, but that will flip and drive you crazy quickly. As you can see, it's still smoking pretty good over there. We're about 45 minutes into a burn, so we'll give it another half hour and see what happens. Okay, we finally got her burned off pretty well. I'm setting at 275, which we have been made aware of. It's the highest temperature it'll go. That thing is showing 300. I removed the racks so that these probes aren't touching anything but air. This one says 313. And this one says 300. But I'm set on 275. So I'm already, you know, 27 degrees over. 
so I guess I'm supposed to take it that I now have a 300 degree smoker and you know I can't set it for 225 and expect it to stay there it's going to be 252 is that what I can expect this is one of my issues with this smoker I cannot dial the temperature in even with three probes I'm getting uh, two or three different temperatures and they're way over what it was set for because it's set for two, 275 and I'm currently running 303 and that's because I had the door open it'll probably go to 320 I mean, it's just ridiculous. I don't know what's going on with it. I really don't. So, you make your judgment on what you think. You know, if anybody knows why my temperatures are so far skewed on this, or if anybody's got a charbroiler that's had this problem and got it fixed and had it dealt with, uh, let me know. You know, because I don't have a clue. I just pretty much dial my temperature to, if I'm cooking at 225, I usually set it for about 210, and I'm usually pretty close. And see, now I'm showing a error. It says 229 error. I think my batteries are going low on that thing. It, and I've only had that. Uh, see, now it's back to normal. Something's wrong with this remote. So it's a, it shows it's got a good signal, uh, 305, 275. It's been on for an hour. I don't know. Like I said, if, if anybody else knows anything about it, let me know. But would I go and buy this unit again if this one ever goes out and I have to buy another one? Probably not. Um mainly because of their customer service sucking so bad the other is the temperature the door i can live with it doesn't leak i can live with that i fixed the screws in the top but it's just been a high maintenance unit and if i have to sit and piddle with the temperatures and stuff like that i might as well use old trusty down there because that's what you have you cannot walk off and leave that thing but it cooks great food. I've cooked one of the best briskets I ever cooked in that smoker. Uh, none of my briskets since have compared to the one I cooked in that. So, like I said, there's my opinion. Uh, no, I would not go buy another one. I'd probably switch off to Pit Boss or, uh, yeah, I know there are so many of them out there that you just have to do your due diligence watch the videos you'll see people on here they'll brag about these things i'm not gonna lie to you i tell you like it is you know i've got people that get upset with me i don't care your comments don't bother me you know i've had people call me an idiot you know i'm new at smoking i've only been doing this about six months but i've gotten pretty dang good at it and I've gotten some pretty damn good food out of it. Uh, but this is supposed to be an electric smoker that you set and forget. Uh, you don't set and forget this one. You've got to stay on it because it will wildly, temperature will wildly get out of control. They say 10 degrees is what their book says. Uh, that's not 10 degrees, Charbroil. I hate to tell you, uh, 275 to 307 is not 10 degrees, okay? And that's on three different thermometers. You know, I trust that one and this one. And let's see what this one says. And see, I'm a little over 300. So I trust those two thermometers. So I'm running at about 307. That is not 275, people. I mean... I think you you figured it out. I don't think that, like I said, I won't I won't buy another one. Uh, I'm not pleased. If I wanted me a set it and forget it smoker, this is not the one to get. Okay. So 
Till next time, folks. See ya. Something happens, Charbroil happens to come through and fix this. I'll update the video. But as of right now, I'm not satisfied. I think they could have spent the extra two cents to put a stand on this remote instead of just having it to where it lays on a table. This way you can set it up and see what it's doing. Just my opinion. Hey, yeah, it's me, Monster. Hit that notification bell down there and please subscribe.